welcome. We are so excited to have you here. Uh, we've got a little bit of everything to share with you, and uh, the students and the teachers are really excited for it. Yeah. So welcome to the Winter Night of the Year. Yes. of the arts. I am any one, and this is any two. We will be your narrators for this evening's show. Hi, everyone. Our first play, the final interrogation of Shashescu's dog, takes us to a small room in Bucharest, Romania. It is New Year's Eve, 1989, six days after the dictator of 24 years was executed. Being interrogated in this scene is the local dog of Nikolai Ceausescu. What is at stake is the dog's life. Remaining loyal to the deposed dictator carries a penalty of death. Whoa, is that a true story? It's based on a true story. So the dog is real? Ceausescu was executed for crimes against his own people. And he had a dog. Yes, he had a dog. Was it cute? Shh. <laughs> The people believe you are beyond reform. Some want you to suffer, others to die right away. Because ours is now a just and fair system, you are entitled to make a statement. What do you have to say for yourself? I am Shesky's dog. His daughter's dog, actually, but she's rather unstable. Even though he gave me her, I've always seen him as my true master. Your master was a cruel and ruthless tyrant who brought misery to his people and shame to his nation. I am Dog Shesky, and my relationship with him is a relationship of man to dog. You do acknowledge that your master was a tyrant. No. The wife can be a bit stern, I will say that. And the daughter can say has many things. But I'm a master's pride and joy, and I've known nothing but love and affection from him. We are talking about the most reviled despot in our nation's history. You do realize that anyone still loyal to him is subject to the death penalty? Listen, where is my master? Let's straight this whole thing out, and you'll be sorry. Let me tell you. Your master is dead. He was shot, like a dog, in the courtyard as he tried to flee the people's wrath on Christmas Day. He travels a lot, you know. Just last month he was in Iran. People love him wherever he goes. He told me so. Your master's dead. He's gone straight to the grave where he will burn for all of time. I see. Do you? No. I see. <laughs> <laughs> the people believe you are beyond reform. I am a simple dog user. 
but you live on imported meat. Well, our people were starving. You ate the finest meal. So has never stayed. Well, people starve. <laughs> I did not see any people starve. You didn't? The people of the castle were well fed. They ate anything that I looked over. Often they pinched them themselves, but what can you do? Service. <laughs> I heard they weighed your meal on a scale of gold. Yes, and I'll tell you the truth. Those are for my benefit. Gold I smell like slight metallic taste. I lose off the dots and serve without pinching for my supper. Well, our people lack basic medical care. You are given drugs and flat vitamins flown in from Prague. I have allergies. <laughs> <laughs> I hated that. Again, because of the allergies. How do you feel about the sacrifices people were making? The suffering they endured while you were pampered? People always loved me. The servants were especially kind to me. Once, once I was mistreated. But it did not happen yet. Yes. You bit the hand of Salvo while he was feeding you. He slapped you, and because he slapped you, he was put to death. Is that correct? I was not slapped by him again. <laughs> So it's true then that you bit the hand that fed you. Sure. Why? It tastes good. <laughs> Weren't you aware that it might cause suffering? I did not suffer. But but the man whose hand you bit. Yes. You bit the man's hand. Yes. He was trying to feed you. Yes, yes, we've known for this. <laughs> Weren't you aware that it might cause suffering? I did not suffer. But the man whose hand you bit. Yes. Did you not, for one second, think about him, his hand, the pain you would cause? <laughs> his hand was here. He did not leave by it. He should not place it so near my teeth. Listen, where is my master? Let's try this whole thing out. Your master is dead. You don't know him. The interrogation cannot end until In your poem, you had an oriental rub. It was Bahara. Oh, Bahara. Yes. I like the feel of it, but its taste is nothing you're excited about. And this rug was red. Was it not the same color as the blood shed by our people under the hand of your master? Again, I liked the feel of it. But the color, that was for them. I do not see color, you know. I'm simple dog. You are simple dog. Yes. Then fetch. Pardon? Come on. You are a simple dog. Fetch! You are kidding. Jump up! Jump up! Little doggy! Come on! Are you kidding? Do you know who Master is? He's not coming back! Well then, I'll just sit right here and wait for him to come back. You may go. When I want something, I'll let you know.
next we have a song called uh, Grizzly Bear, if you're excited. just turned 13. I haven't turned 13 yet. I hear it's a hard age to be. Exactly. Anyway, Zella wants nothing more than to be a full-grown te teenager like her sister, Cammie. What's wrong with being a kid? Honestly, that's a good question. Shh, Really, really little, I was scared to go to sleep at night. 
Are you uh, are you asking me what I think you're asking me? Can you? Just one more time. You're not serious. Please. See, this is the kind of thing Carolyn Renowitz would never do. Just do it, Cammy. Fine. <laughs> there are no monsters under your bed. Are you sure? <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, Stella. Thank you for checking. Good night, Zella. Good night, Cammy. Oh, and happy birthday or whatever. Thanks. <laughs> I've watched 
you grow. I know. I've lasted longer than most of your friends. Heck, I've lasted longer than most of your pets. Unfortunately, I know. And none of them could even talk to you when they were alive. Well, they were real pets. Am I not real to you? <laughs> Remember? When you didn't want to eat your Brussels sprouts at dinner, so you wrapped them in a napkin and gave them to me? Who will eat them when I'm gone? Pokey! Or when we hid the babysitter's car keys in the pantry so she couldn't get home? Who will help you trick her now? I don't do any of that stuff anymore. I like Brussels sprouts now, but I'm too old for a babysitter. Too old for a monster? I'm sorry about before, okay? I'm sorry about candy. It was a stupid idea, and I shouldn't have done that. You're right about that. That was cruel, Zella. That was a cop-out. You could have talked to me in person like the adult you're trying to be. That hurts my feelings. What about my feelings? You don't think trying to kill me doesn't hurt my feelings, huh? <laughs> you think again. Don't you get why I have to do this? It's not easy for me either, you know, but we just have to go our separate ways. Thirteen-year-olds don't have monsters. Do I embarrass you? <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? Did you just go on living under my bed for the rest of my life? What about when I move out and go to college and have a roommate? Or when I get married and share a bed with someone else? It was just bound to happen someday, Bowie. It was inevitable. Look at you and your big words. <laughs>
Dragon Lord, Tales from the Darklands, Chapter 1. There aren't any other chapters. Chapter 1 <laughs> by Randall D. Sanders. Hope you enjoy.
convey a broader message. Huh? Life can feel frustrating for all of us. The arts, all of them. They can broaden our perspective, give us a voice, lift our spirits. And that's what R.E. Rockin' hopes to do right now. Yeah! Check, check. Ooh, hello. Hello. Thanks for your patience. Oh, I'm very, very excited to, uh, to be here with you. We've got some fantastic musicians at the school. And we've got an after-school ensemble that anyone's welcome to join called Are You Rockin'? And uh, these are some of the musicians. Not all, but just the people who could be here tonight. Uh, we also do have a high school choir. Uh, but, you know, tonight, this yeah. is our high school choir. <laughs> Woo! Give it up. Yeah. So we've chosen three songs that we've actually never performed before, and I hope you enjoy them. Y'all ready? So much. This next song is called Mad World by Tears for Fears. Hope you like it. All around me are 
Familiar faces, worn out places, worn out faces. Bright and early for the daily races, going nowhere, going nowhere. Their tears are filling up their glasses, no expression, no expression. Hide my head, I want to drown my sorrow, no tomorrow, no tomorrow. And I find it kind of funny, I find it kind of sad. The dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've ever had. I find it hard to tell you, I find it hard to take. When people run in circles, it's a very, very mad world. so much. We've got one more song for you. This last one is called Call Me by Blondie. Um, and if you know the chorus, feel free to sing along. It'd be pretty cool. Do you need this one? Yeah, it's on my vinyl. I'll throw it over there. Okay. I'll be over here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't All get right. nervous. <laughs> we're good, we're good. Drop the pick. No worries. I'm going to leave that there. I had two. I always bring an extra pick. All right. Right. Love, roll me in design. 
liner sheets I'll never get enough Emotions come, I don't know why Cover up love's alibi Call me on the line Call me, call me anytime Call me, my love When you're ready, we can share the wine Call me Anyone who wants to come on stage, take one final bow. Theater students, dance students, anyone who performed tonight, come on up on stage. Final bow of the evening. Yeah, uh, no, only performers tonight. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. People who perform tonight. <laughs> 